to uh, Dr. Logos. Spiros Logos is a cardiac surgeon, co-worker with Dr. Mitropoulos here at Mitera, and uh, very much interested and experienced in ECMO, uh, both in Greece and also in the UK. We stole him from the UK a couple of years ago. So Spiro, please give us your experience uh, on ECMO, cannulations, and complications of the technique. Thank you. A warm good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen, and dear colleagues. Uh, thank you to the organizing committee uh, for allowing me uh, this privilege to talk about cannulation and complications while on ECMO. As the uh, two previous uh, speakers have highlighted the benefits of ECMO, they cannot um, uh, be more than highlighted. Nevertheless, um, when you bring human physiology and machine, uh, especially a complex machine uh, as the ECMO uh, circuit, you will always have uh, complications. Um, the ECMO as we know it um, has been developed at the same time with the uh, CPB circuit. Um, nevertheless, nowadays we tend to um, refer to ECMO as ECLS. Uh, in the setting of um, uh, cardiopulmonary resuscitation, we uh, uh, use the term ECPR. Uh, for, um, uh, of course, it's a heart and lung machine. Um, for um, the history, um, Dr. Bartlett uh, was the first one to successfully um, get a, a patient off uh, respiratory ECMO, and this is this lady over here, Esperanza Hope, which is the first survivor. Um, in terms of cannulation, it is a surgical procedure. Uh, nevertheless, there are cases and there are um, areas where the anesthetist uh, will take over, so it's not a pure surgical procedure. We have an open procedure, a combination of a partially open and percutaneous, and a full percutaneous procedure. Um, so the aim is to place those things into this patient. And yes, this is an awake patient that has actually given birth while on ECMO. Um, the first um, part of the um, ECMO is to choose the cannulas. Uh, we don't go randomly to the shelf and pick up a cannula, but we have to oblige to certain rules. The body weight and the site of the cannulation is what will dictate the cannula size, both on arterial and venous setting. For that, we aim to fit the biggest possible. Uh, the size of the cannula and the body weight will allow us um, to have adequate flow, and adequate flow is one thing uh, that indicates how well our patient is supported. Uh, bearing in mind that uh, cardiac output on ECMO is the flow on ECMO plus the residual cardiac output, and uh, ECMO flow is dependent on the cannula size, the location of the vessel, the intravascular volume, the hematocrit, the transmembrane gradient, BSA, and systemic vascular resistance. So this is a typical cervical um, neck cannulation. Uh, the sternoclomastoid triangle has been um, uh, opened, and you can see the sternoclomastoid muscle retracted towards your um, lower end of the screen. The cannulas, the uh, two head and neck vessels, the jugular vein towards the lower end of the screen, and the carotid artery towards the upper end of the screen are ready to be cannulated. Of course, we don't just stick the cannulas in. We have reference points. For the arterial cannula, we have the angle of Lewis, and for the venous cannula, we have the xiphoid process of how deep we should introduce the cannulas. And yes, it looks nice, uh, nicely and tidy. It's not always like that. Um, check the uh, patient before you start ECMO. This is a, 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 an x-ray uh, and an echo um, that will just uh, will um, show you how uh, nicely the uh, cannulas are positioned. For the femoral cannulation, we uh, aim to uh, keep it for patients above 30 kilograms, uh, either by itself or a combination with, uh, with uh, neck cannulation, as you can see here on a child with a dilated cardiomyopathy. Um, the VV ECMO, as my previous um, speaker has actually highlighted, uh, uses a two lumen cannula. Again, we have rules of how, uh, where, and uh, what the cannula size would be, uh, and this is how it looks like on a semi celdiger procedure. Uh, with the head uh, of the patient facing uh, towards neutral and uh, facing towards the uh, sort of healthy side. Uh, this is the diaphragm, or the diagram of how it should look. Um, the venous part of the uh, cannula should be facing the wall of the right atrium, whereas the arterial side should be facing the tricuspid valve towards the right ventricle. And this is how it looks, or it should look on the x-ray. Uh, central cannulation, uh, it's the transition of a cardiopulmonary bypass circuit into a ECMO circuit using the existing um, cannulas, uh, bearing in mind uh, that you might uh, need to uh, place addition additional cannulas if you want to vent the heart. It's very rare uh, to have central cannulation um, for first time ECMO. It could be the possibility uh, when you have uh, ECPR. 
So, um, you have chosen all this, um, and you're just about to start the ECMO. That doesn't mean that there are no complications. Uh, I'll try and highlight some of them, um, uh, if uh, time allows, uh, and sort of tell you a couple of actions that you need to take. But before we start, ECMO is not a cure. It's actually a disease and should be treated that way. So knowledge, practice, teamwork, and proper actions are what are required to survive any ECMO accident. Um, complications on ECMO are common. Each patient is very likely to develop an ECMO-related complication. Circuit-related complications are rare, but significant, and so are mechanical parts. From the 2019 um, ECMO registry, um, you can see the huge amount of ECMO runs uh, for the neonatal and pediatric population, and of course the survival rate. And although this is an older paper, uh, it highlights the possibility, the, all the possibilities that can go wrong and the effect that it has on the survival of the patient. So first thing, uh, this is a Centrimac um, uh, control unit, um, and you can see that there's always redundancy. So there's two consoles and two magnetically levitating uh, pumps, um, and if one of them fails, um, you can always switch to the other one. Again, it could be dramatic. You need to call for help, clamp, and by all means, uh, ventilate and hemodynamic support of the patient is required. So if always um, try to uh, minimize time on battery. Batteries will uh, run out. Always make sure that they are connected uh, nicely into the electrical sockets. They do not interfere with other uh, equipment um, and always be prepared if needed to use man or woman power um, to hand crank the uh, device if needed and support the patient. The circuit, it's vast. It sits by the bedside. Lots of components that um, can go wrong. Um, lots of components that uh, are weak, like with plastic, um, damage from uh, the patients or from the people around the ECMO circuit, um, the oxygenator, the uh, sampling ports, um, and as you can see here, again, it's a complex, um, uh, it's a complex array of things. Um, you could have massive blood loss uh, with hemodynamic compromise. You could have introduction of air into the circuit. Um, fracture of many of the components, especially if you use alcohol or any other solvents, uh, break, uh, breakaway three-way taps or sampling ports, um, cutting or puncturing of the circuit, tubing, um, and of course the systemic inflammatory response due to the um, uh, presence of plastic. Um, be very careful uh, when you handle the circuit. Do not use any alcohol or any other solvents. Be very, very careful when you sample or take any actions. Always allocate a spotter uh, to walk around the ECMO circuit. Cannulas, I think they are probably quite robust or probably one of the most robust um, parts of the ECMO circuit. Nevertheless, um, they look nicely um, placed there, but you can have introduction of air, fractures and dislodgements, blood loss, infection at the side of the um, infection, and although we do not want to admit it, sometimes the, we are not able to put them together or cannulate. This is a, um, a very dreaded complication. It's actually arterial cannula disruption. You can see an arterial cannula and a venous cannula. This is a real emergency and you have to take very quick actions. So um, you're just about to cannulate, uh, but cannulation is a surgical procedure and surgical procedure does carry risk. Uh, damage to the cannulating vessel, including dissection, hemopneumothorax, hemopericardium and tamponade, uh, especially when you damage the SVC to RA junction or a penetrating injury to the RA accidental dislodgements, and yes, unable to cannulate. So I cannot show you a tamponade for obvious reasons, uh, but I can show you a tension pneumothorax with a mediastinum uh, being shifted towards the healthy side, um, being treated with a brave uh, pigtail uh, chest drain. Um, of course, um, as the next speaker will um, also highlight about the complications of procedures, it's a, it could be a tricky procedure, so bearing in mind that uh, if um, things become uh, very complicated, you might need to interfere um, uh, on a surgical basis. Uh, kinking of the cannula, it can happen. Um, it might be a simple sort of readjustment, but you might need to stop uh, ECMO support and recannulate and replace. So um, you've cannulated and you're running your ECMO. Um, that doesn't mean you're out of the woods yet, by all means. Um, numerous complications, as you can see on the screen. Uh, word of advice, always walk around your ECMO circuit. Uh, you might uh, uh, be lucky enough to um, see things and prevent things from happening. So, air in the circuit. Um, you can see it both on an echo 
and on the tube, dire emergency, um, many ways of air finding its way into the circuit, especially if you have an open chest, any kinking of the cannula, cavitation or um, misplacing of the cannulas. A small pre-oxygenator amount of air can be handled by the oxygenator. More, more, most of the time, you need to come off a CLS, clamp the arterial line first, um, take measures, um, support the patient. You might need to change the circuit altogether. Um, and never forget that if air has actually found its way into the body, you need to um, focus on the central nervous system support by using hypothermia, barbiturates, steroids, uh, and the other measures. Bleeding, um, one of my colleagues in the next um, uh, lecture is going to um, highlight some of the uh, bleeding uh, complications while on ECMO. Um, we could run on a bleeding parameter, which means that we can run an ACT to about 160, check your clotting profiles, correct everything that needs to be corrected. Of course, a protein uh, is a, a, an alternative. Um, again, it, there is a possibility for a surgical intervention uh, but you have to um, uh, consider the fact that it can be very, very complicated. If you can come off ECMO, please do so. If not, uh, you could run a very high flow ECMO uh, without any heparin. Um, this is a very interesting case, and I was lucky or unlucky to be present. As you can see, the aortic cannula has left the child. Uh, it has gradually migrated and left the child. Uh, feel free to ask me what happened to the patient. Uh, again, it's a dire emergency. Make sure you, you um, have a lot of able hands um, with you. Um, central nervous system complications, very dreaded. Um, I think we'll probably categorize them as acute, subacute, or chronic. Uh, this is a dreaded intraventricular hemorrhage, uh, which unfortunately might actually indicate not just the ECMO, the end of the ECMO run, but the end of the patient. Um, Clots in the circuit, um, if you see clots there, um, most definitely you have clots in other parts of the circuit. Detail checks, change the circuit as soon as possible, uh, and send the appropriate blood tests. Um, misplacement or um, cannula malposition, uh, this is a VV ECMO. Um, the, as you can see, the cannula has actually probably migrated uh, through the tricuspid or into the right ventricle, uh, probably needs readjustment. Limbishemia, as we said, um, the femoral cannulation is not very common in the pediatric population. Nevertheless, um, the best way to treat it, uh, apart from checking um, the, uh, yeah, the, the legs, uh, of course, is placing a distal perfusion cannula. It's very rare that the vascular colleagues will be involved for fasciotomies or any other surgical intervention. And this is the distal perfusion cannula. Cannulating the wrong vessel, it can happen, of course. It's a lethal, most of the time, lethal complication and life-threatening. Uh, this is a venous cannula in the carotid artery, uh, and this is a arterial cannula in the left femoral vein. Recirculation is something um, that uh, is unique to the VV ECMO, uh, where the um, very rich oxygenated blood, instead of going into the support, to support the lungs, it will be withdrawn uh, by the venous side of the VV cannula, um, thus providing not optimal um, support for, the, for your patient. You might need to uh, consider changing the cannulas, um, um, correct volumes, and if needed, uh, maybe change it into a VA uh, component. Harlequin syndrome um, is seen uh, on VA ECMO runs, especially when you have a femoral cannulation or a not nicely placed arterial cannula. Uh, in essence, the um, native cardiac output um, will actually come into contact or collide with the ECMO flow, thus the upper end of the body will be not nicely uh, perfused, whereas the lower end will be perfused with rich oxygen. Uh, again, you might need to increase the flow, increase your ventilation supports, and readjust cannulas. Uh, very, very careful that the coronaries will be uh, supplied by less oxygenated blood, thus the myocardium will not uh, be perfused uh, as it should be, and recovery will be uh, jeopardized. Hemolysis. Uh, when you have play, misplaced the cannula or placed the wrong cannula, when you're overspeeding the uh, ECMO machine, uh, again, um, check your um, blood test, uh, optimize volume, uh, review your settings, um, make sure you have imaging to see that the tip of the cannula are not um, uh, in any contact or with any, any, any clots and consider changing the circuit. Perforation of a, of a vessel, 
Of course, it can happen. You can have local bleeding, more diffuse bleeding, and this is ephemeral um, injury. Um, um, the esteemed colleague from Bristol on his next topic will talk about complications that can occur during the procedure. I've just highlighted with them and I'll leave the honors to the next speaker. Um, the ECMO support is a long-term support, so the patient will stay in intensive care for a long time. So we have to be sure that uh, we mentioned the general ICU-related complications, the need for other um, organs to be supported, especially the renal um, system and the gastrointestinal system, the hospital-acquired infections, as it was previously highlighted, neurological, neuromuscular, neuropsychological, uh, ECMO-related scarring and tissue damage, uh, vessel stenosis, um, and there is ongoing research uh, focusing on how the brain uh, is going to be protected and how you will prevent uh, brain injury. Uh, Take-home messages. Complications or ECMO are common. Support the patient at all times. Each patient is likely to develop an ECMO-related complication. Circuit-related complications are rare but significant. Take appropriate actions quickly. Call for help. Know your drills. Uh, it's a team effort, so work as a team. Uh, as lack of experience is the trigger of many complications, adequate training is essential to minimize adverse effects. Again, know your drills, work as a team. And Murphy's Law, what means that whatever can happen will happen. Thank you for your attention. Wonderful. Thank you very much. What an amazing talk. Thank you.